All right, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at cultures. We're going to have to do a little bit of time travel, and we're going to go back to our microbiology that we all took prior to nursing school. And we're going to have to remember what the purpose of cultures are. And what we want to do is we want to find out what's going on with our patient. We want to look at, is there a specific pathogen that's coming? Uh, maybe it's a bacteria, or maybe it's a virus, or maybe it's a fungus. Uh, and is it causing harm to our patient? Is it causing our patient to become sick? Uh, do Have they developed some sort of infection? Well, the purpose of cultures are to isolate the pathogen. So we'll get a sample and send it to the lab, grow it over a, cult a couple of days. And then, and then what we do is something called a sensitivity. And what the sensitivity does is it's going to go and figure out what particular medication is going to destroy that pathogen. So if we have a bacteria, uh, that grows, which antibiotic is going to find it off and which one's going to take care of it. So let's get to into the some of the specifics of cultures. Now, when we talk about uh, the, the pathophysiology of cultures and using cultures, the goal here is we want to refresh our memory about microbiology when we're talking about the different types of pathogens. Remember, your patients can get uh, infections from direct contact with different types of bacteria so they can ingest them. Um, they can be delivered by airborne or droplet. They can uh, even, so they could get it from some sort of contamination. So think uh, Foley care. So if you're not using good clean technique, you could potentially contaminate your patient's urinary tract and they can get a urinary tract infection because we've exposed them to a potential pathogen. Uh, often some surgery, some surgical sites can become contaminated, which is why we use sterile technique. And sometimes environmental exposures can also put your patients at risk for different types of pathogens. Now pathogens become problematic because they cause harm to our patient. So if your patient has a weakened immune system, they're not going to be able to fight off that bacterial infection that, norm that they normally would be able to. And uh, it's going to require some sort of medical intervention. And this is why we do cultures. So your role of the nurse is to obtain the sample for the culture. So only in certain situations are doctor or providers going to do that. Um, but for the most part, it's going to be your responsibility to get them. And there are a couple ways we do that, do that. And we're going to go over those here. So you have different types of direct sampling. So you have like oral swabs, you have, um, oral pharyngeal swabs. So think tonsils, um, you can do, um, direct skin swabs or areas of suspicion that they may think is a bacterial infection. Um, you're going to do uh, blood cultures. So you would actually get that uh, directly from the patient via um, phlebotomy, um, urine cultures, fecal cultures. So those are direct samplings. The, o the other interesting type of sample that you may get is called a sputum sample. And the best way to do this is to have your patient take a couple of deep breaths and then give a good deep cough and then they spit the sample into a cup. One thing you want to be mindful of is that there is, there may be, be a contaminant in the saliva. So make sure that you notate um, that wherever you need to. The other type of sputum that you may get is called, uh, another sputum sample is called a bowel or a bronchoalveolar lavage. Um, that's where it's most of the time it's a respiratory therapist. They come in, so they'll have like a breathing tube and they'll actually get a direct sample from the patient's lungs. And then that's sent to the lab and they grow whatever pathogen is there. And, um, and so they'll grow that and check a sensitivity. There's also a couple of other unique situations where you're going to get a different type of sample. So you can get something called a tissue culture. Um, and the other one that you're going to have is uh, maybe a device. So let's say you have uh, some facilities. It may be your responsibility to get the tip of a central line if they think uh, there's a like a central line associated uh, bloodstream infection called a central line associated bloodstream infection, CLABSI. If they think there's a collapse going on, uh, you they may actually, when they pull the, the line, uh, take the tip and submit that off to the lab, and they may grow a culture to see if there's a, um, some sort of um, uh, infection going on. I don't want you to be surprised in those certain types of situations. They are kind of rare, but it does happen. So what do you need to be aware of as the nurse? Well, the first thing you need to do is Follow policy. Find out what your unit policy is in regarding different types of samples. Make sure you follow those. If you have a question about the type of uh, culture you're supposed to get, then call the lab. Find out what are the specifics. In most cases, you're going to be responsible for uh, that getting that direct direct sample. 
And you need to make sure that you follow stale technique when you have to, or, or even when there's a question, the last thing you want to do is have some sort of contamination on your, or contaminant from your hands that, that uh, on you or that falls into the sample and it grows and gives a false positive, some other type of pathogen that just uh, result, results in delay of care for your patient. Okay, so your patient had a culture sent off and you waited for three days and you get your results back and there's no growth. So what does that mean? Well, it means that there's likely no pathogen and there's some other reason that it needs to be investigated if there's a suspicion of in, uh, of infection. It doesn't always necessarily mean that there's nothing growing there, but it, uh, there was either not enough growth or that they're not suspicious that there is a pathogen there. So what about abnormal results? Well, they'll indicate some sort of specific pathogen and they're gonna test for, suspect, for susceptibility and sensitivity uh, to different types of medication. So they'll have like the agar that grows like this and they use these little sensitivity discs on it. And what happens is you'll get growth right up next to it and then you'll have growth around another one, but it's not as close. And then you'll have some that have growth way out here. And then you'll have like some growth right next to it. So these are antibiotic discs. And what happens is you'll notice that this area here away from the disc tells you that this bacteria growing won't get next to the disc because it won't grow because the bacteria, the antibiotic is uh, effective in treating and killing the pathogen. So this one would be most specific, but they'll do these tests and they'll figure out which ones are, um, which one are, is going to treat that type of uh, infection. Remember that when we're dealing with cultures, we're focusing on infection control and we're also looking at the lab values for our patient. So let's recap. Well, the purpose of a culture is to isolate a pathogen and find out what's, what's causing an infection. Sensitivities look at the appropriate treatment for and to figure out what type of medication or class of medication is going to help to get rid of that pathogen when you're unsure of what to do follow lab policy and follow facility policy that'll help you find out what uh, sample you need for your patient and lastly make sure you're using proper technique use sterile technique when you are uh, unsure or when you absolutely um, need to uh, so whether that's whether you're using clean gloves or sterile gloves always opt for sterile technique uh, in the event of a question and make sure that you're not contaminating your simple and get that sent off to the lab. That's our lesson on cultures. Make sure you check out all the resources attached to this lesson. Now go out and be your best selves today. And as always, happy nursing.